For a fixed size array, the storage spot where the element is stored is the slot where the array is declared plus the index of the array element. For example, let's say that we have a uint256 fixed size array of size 3. I'll call this R0 and has three elements, let's say 1, 2, and 3. The slot of the first element, the 0th index, will be slot where the array is declared. We start with slot 0 and this state variable is declared in slot 0. So this will be slot 0 plus the index of the array element. Index of the first array element will be 0. So 0 plus 0 is equal to slot 0. The next element, the second element, will be index 1. Again, the slot where the array is declared is in slot 0. So we start from slot 0 again. And the index will be 1. So this will be equal to slot 1. And the last element in this fixed size array, the slot where the array is declared, again, we start from slot 0, and the index is 2. So the last element in this array will be stored in slot 2. Let's take a look at another example. So let's say uint256. Again, let's create a fixed size array of uint of size 3. And I'll call this r1. Say has 4, 5, and 6. So slot where the array is declared. We used up slot 0, 1, and 2. So the starting slot where this array is declared is slot 3. The first element is index 0, so this will be 3 plus 0, or will be equal to 3. The next element will be index 1, and the starting slot is slot 3, so this will be slot 3 plus 1, or slot 4. And likewise, the last one will be slot 5. If each element inside a fixed size array is less than 32 bytes, then it will be packed into a single slot if that is possible. So, for example, let's say we have a uint128 fixed size array of size 5. I'll call this R2. And let's say it has elements 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. We used up 3, 4, and 5, so the starting slot will be slot 6. The index of the first element is 0, so this will be plus 0. Or the first element will be stored in slot 6. The next element the second element, since uint128 only takes up 16 bytes, we still have another 16 bytes that we can fit inside slot 6. So the next element, which only takes up 16 bytes, will also be stored in slot 6. The third element, this will have an index of 2. The starting slot will be slot 6, and index will be 2. Since in each slot we can fit two of these uint128, the slot where the element having the index 2 is stored will be in slot 6 plus 1, or this will be equal to slot 7. And the same goes for the next element having the index 3. This will also be in stored in slot 7. And the last element will be stored in slot 8. This is because we used up all of slot 7, so we move on to the next slot that is available, which is slot 8. And at this point, for slot 8, we only use 16 bytes, and we still have 16 bytes that can be filled up. Next, let's write some functions to actually get these values using assembly. So I'll create a function called test r0. For the input, we'll pass in the index of the array to get uint 256i. Public view returns uint 256. I'll call this b. The value that is stored at index i. Assembly. Okay, for r0, the value will be stored in the slot. So let's say b is equal to s load i for the index. If you wanted to access the 0th element, for i we will pass in 0. If you wanted to access the first element, for i we will pass in 1. And if you wanted to access the second element, for i we will pass in 2. Okay, let's create another function. This time we will get the values from r1. So I'll copy the first function and then I'll name it to test r1. If you wanted to get the 0th element in r1, then the index will range from 0 to 2, and the starting point will be from slot 3. So say here, I'll need to type start from 3, and then add the index. If you wanted to get the 0th index, then we will pass in 0. 3 plus 0 is 3, so we will get slot 3, which will store this number 4. If you wanted to get the array element with index 1, for i, we will pass in 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, and this will load slot 4. Okay, let's write one more function. This time, we'll get the values from R2. I'll name this test R2. Since R2 holds elements of size uint128, the value that we'll return is uint128. 
Inside assembly, we will first get all of 32 bytes from a slot. So say that I'll call this B32, short for bytes 32, equals S load. And this array starts from slot 6. So for our starting point, we'll say add 6. On the top, I'll list out the slot where each element is stored. On the bottom, I'll list out the index of the array. And in the middle, I'll list out the values that is stored in this array. To get the 0th element, you'll need to start from 6, and to 6, we'll need to add 0. To get the first element, again, we'll need to start from 6, and to 6, we'll need to add 0 again. To get the array element with index 2, you'll need to start from 6, and then add 1. 6 plus 1 will be 7. To get the array element with index 3, we'll start from 6 again, and then to 6, we'll add 1 to get 7. And lastly, to get the array element with index 4, again we'll start from slot 6, and then to 6 we add 2 to get slot 8. What's happening here is that every time the index increases by 2, then we need to increase the slot where we start from by 1. So for example, the first two index, 0 and 1, will start from 6. The next two indexes, 2 and 3, will start from 7. And the next index, 4, will start from 8. So what we need to do here is divide the index that we want to access by 2. This will load the 32 bytes of the slot that stores two elements. So the next step is to somehow get the elements from this 32 bytes. Remember that in each slot there are 32 bytes and data is packed from right to left. So the 0th element will be stored on the right and then next to it, going towards left, we will have the first element. The second element again will start from the right and the third element will be to the left of the second element. And the last element will be stored starting from the right of slot 8. The pattern that we observe here is that if i is even, then we need to get the 128 bits starting from the right and going left. Get right 128 bits. And the way we can get this is after we load this 32 bytes, we simply just cast it into uint128. When we cast it into uint128, the left 128 bits will be cut off, and we're left with the right 128 bits. So, cast to uint128. On the other hand, if i is odd, then we need to get the left 128 bits. And we can do this by first loading the 32 bytes, and then shifting this right by 128. So, shift right 128 bits. Okay, so let's actually implement this code. To figure out whether i is even or odd, I'll use the switch statement inside assembly, switch mod i to. Case, if it is odd, then we need to shift right by 128 bits. So b is equal to shift right 128 b 32. Otherwise, default, so this will be the case when i is even, we simply need to cast this b 32 to uint 128. And we can do this by simply assigning to b the 32 bytes. When we assign 32 bytes to a uint128, it will cut off the left side of the 128 bits. Okay, let's compile the contract and then call these functions. I'll hit Control S and the contract compiles. Next, I'll deploy this. And then let's call some functions. So, let's try getting the 0th element from R0. Put a 0 here and I get a 1. If I put a 1 here, I get a 2. And if I put a 2 here, I get a 3. Okay, let's try getting the elements from R1. If I put a 0, I get a 4. Put a 1, I get a 5. And put a 2, I get a 6. Okay, lastly, let's try the function test R2. Put a 0, get a 7. 1 is 8. 2 is 9. 3 is 10, 4 is 11, and 5 is 0. This is because for slot 8, we're only using up the 16 bytes starting from the right. So the remaining 16 bytes to the left inside slot 8 is 0 right now. That is why when we try to access element index 5, we only have 5 elements. So element at index 5 doesn't exist. That is why we get a 0 over here.